And welcome to Wednesday night Bible study here at Faith and Victory Church. We're so glad to have you tonight. And um, let's all, you know, be prepared around in this area. Uh, major ice storms coming in tonight. So just um, trust you've all got your uh, supplies stored up, that you're prepared to um, stay safe and warm and have food to eat if you can't, if you can't get out. And um, praise the Lord. Amen. And we just thank God no harm comes to anybody and everybody gets kept safe in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, uh, so happy to have you with us tonight. <clears throat> we will, um, I, I believe, won't be any problem by the time Sunday gets here as long as there's no widespread power outages. Um, but we should be able to have services in person on Sunday. Um, but uh, be safe. Don't, don't uh, go out driving in, in this. You cannot drive on ice. Um, it's impossible. So don't do it. Don't, I can do all things through Christ, but you can't drive on ice. Um, he, did, he did give you a brain, so don't do it. Stay home, be safe, all right? And we'll see you all in person on Sunday. Glory to God. Again, unless there's some widespread power outages where, the, uh, where um, we can't meet in person. Other than that, we'll see you then. Praise the Lord. So um, we want to uh, continue, continue ministering along the lines. Now, I know we were talking about confession for a couple of weeks. But I do want to kind of segue into that um, with um, our words and how they dominate our lives. Our words and how they dominate our lives. And we welcome all of you that are watching right now. Um, Hebrews chapter 11, and verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, referring to God. For they that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Praise the Lord. And so the life of faith which we live, the life of faith which we're called to, um, is how we please God. We honor God. So we want to live a life that honors, pleases in, uh, God in everything that we do and how we act and conduct ourselves. Praise the Lord. Amen. But the life of faith, as we've talked about in the past couple of weeks, you know, Jesus said in Mark's gospel, the 11th chapter, which we will read again, hallelujah. But he's, you know, he tells us that faith works by saying, and I'm just going to kind of, and I'll get, when we get to that passage of scripture, we'll, we'll confirm that. But faith is released. The number one way to release your faith is by saying, amen. Hallelujah. So let's, let's go ahead and make um, some points here. Number one. The number one point we want to make tonight is we will never rise above the confession of our lips. Remember we talked about in, couple, in the past couple of weeks how that um, the thermostat of our life is our confession, that which we say. You know, when we set that temperature on the house, the heating unit or the air unit brings the temperature into the house to, mat, to match what we set that thermostat to. Our confession is our thermostat. And, but we will never rise above that. Proverbs 6, 2 says, You are snared. Thou art snared by the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. In other words, what you're saying is again governing you. What you're saying is controlling you. What you're saying is determining where you're going. And so we'll never rise above that confession. Faith comes by hearing, Romans 10, 17, and hearing by the word of God. So faith comes to us by hearing what God's word says. And we want to change the circumstances, the situations of life around us. We want to rise, we want to, rise to a place of uh, authority, a place of victory, a place of health, a place of soundness, a place of pleasing God then it's going to have to be found in our confession. Romans 10, 8 through 10 says, What saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation and so <clears throat> again the words of our mouth 
we will not rise above them. So uh, if you're saying I'll never have anything, I'll never mount anything, I'll never achieve anything, I'll never do anything, then that's about where you're going to go. You're not going to go above that. You're not going to talk that way and then become multimillionaire. Okay? Because you're always saying you're not. Um, the power of words. Elvis Presley, you, uh, uh, J.D. Sumner one time, if you remember Elvis Presley, uh, one of his ma major backup groups, he, they had the Jordanaires, but the long-running backup group for Elvis, particularly his um, touring days, you know, at post comeback touring days was J.D. Sumner and the Stamps, Southern Gospel Quartet group um, that traveled him and sang backup. And J.D. Sumner said one time in an interview I saw, he said, if you said it once, he said it 10,000 times. Elvis said, I'll never live past the age that my mother died. And he died the same age that his mother did. Said it over and over and over again. He set that course. He set that um, destiny. He set that place in his life by his confession. He didn't rise above it. He didn't live past that because he kept saying it. And he kept saying it. And he kept saying it. Um, and so we, we need to realize that we want to rise. If you want to rise above where you are, change what you're saying. Uh, I like to say this sometimes. There's times we need to check up from the neck up. We need to change the things we're saying, change the things we're listening to, change the things we're feeding on so that we can say newer things. Remember, good man had the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth good things. Evil man had the evil treasure, bringeth forth evil things, Jesus said. If you want good things, you're going to have to set you know, a, a good confession out there. Praise the Lord. Your confession, number point number two, your confession will precede your possession. Let me say that again. You write this down. Number one, we will, we will never rise above the confession of our lips. Number two, your confession precedes possession. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now, we know the story from, or you should, if you ever listen to us, you know it, because we, we, we quote this passage of Scripture regularly. Um. Remember, Jesus was going um, uh, into Jerusalem and saw a fig tree afar off having leaves thereon, and he, and he was a hunger, and he came happy if he might uh, find figs thereon. But when he got there, there was no figs. For the time of the figs, the season, time of the year for the figs, figs was not yet. However, a fig tree in that part of the world, when it had leaves, it had figs. So it had bloomed, it, it gained leaves out of season, which had, was saying, I've got figs. When Jesus got there, he saw the fig tree had no figs. He said, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And he walked off. Going to Jerusalem, run the money changers out of the temple, all this stuff. Go back out, sleep, come back. And the Bible said on the morrow, as they passed by, Peter called to his remembrance, said, Master, behold, the fig tree thou cursed is withered away. It's dried up from the roots. And Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. Now, in the Greek construct there, um, you, could, you could just translate that to say have the faith of God or, or literally the God kind of faith. Okay? So have the, the, God, the God kind of faith. Now, um, based on what he says next, leads us to, to uh, lean more upon the idea that when he was said have faith in God or have the God kind of faith, he was majoring on to that fig tree and when they said you cursed it and it died he said have faith in God it wasn't talking about just have faith in God in the sense of you, you get saved because you have faith in God he's talking about operating in the God kind of faith and he's teaching his disciples and telling them because this is this is the this is the um, the narrative that's going on this isn't just something out in the middle Jesus tells us have faith in God. Trust God. No matter what's going on in your life, you know, you're getting pummeled. Just trust God. He knows what he's doing. That's not the storyline here that the Scripture's giving us. The Scripture's giving us a storyline that Jesus spoke to a fig tree and it died. And when questioned about it later, 
Jesus says, have the faith of God. For verily, it goes on verse 24, 3, I say unto you, now verily, uh, the King James, other, other Bible translations we use, of a surety, a solemn oath. Um, it's, it's like, a, it is like a solemn oath, swearing, you know, a, 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 where we can't, I, this is not a lie. Verily I say unto you that whosoever, so this tells me that when Jesus had had faith in God or the God kind of faith or the faith of God, that his emphasis there had to be on them possessing this faith. Because he begins to teach them about how this faith operates. Hallelujah. And so he says, have the faith of God. I'm sorry, our dog was doing something outside that was funny. There's one drag a bowl around, and it's a, the little six-inch off the high ground beagle. And it's just clanging on the deck. And everybody here is laughing. I'm trying to keep a straight face and teach. Okay. <clears throat> he says, for whosoever. Now, if you're out there tonight looking at me right now, I don't, we're, and if you're in, the, in here, here with me right now, I want you to raise your hand because that means you're a whosoever. Okay. <laughs> for whosoever. Didn't say the first century apostles of the church. Didn't say. Only the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Only the inner circle of Jesus. Only, you know, the higher grade of apostles in the book of Acts. He said, for whosoever. Whosoever. So Jesus is now going to teach what to do or how to use the God kind of faith. Now remember, Romans tells us that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Well, where did that faith come from? God. And faith is increased, and more faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what kind of faith is it? Faith is of God. <clears throat> faith is, born, is birth of God from his word, from it deposited in your spirit, and now Jesus takes this opportunity where he's spoken to this fig tree, cursed it, told it to die, and it died, and, and it dried up from the roots. And Peter calls his remembrance to it and says, you cursed the fig tree, it died. And Jesus doesn't go, yes, I am the Son of God. And because I am the Son of God, the fig tree obeyed me. That's not what he did. What he did was turn right around, and, now I have, and, and, and as a good teacher, had an object lesson for his disciples and said, and let me kind of put it in, in, in the modern structure of language. Now you have the faith of God. For verily, or because I'm telling you, verily I say unto you, that whosoever, raise your hand, come on out there on uh, Facebook land, raise your hand, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Now notice this verse starts out with a whosoever, but whosoever can have whatsoever. That's what the master said. That's what Jesus said. But notice what he says here. Number one, whosoever shall say. Remember we said you'll never rise above the confession of your lips. Unto this mountain. What Now we're, not, we're talking allegorically here. <clears throat> Symbolically. The mountain is not talking about going to the Himalayans and putting Mount Everest out in the ocean somewhere. All right? Now, you got people who sit around the world saying, well, you know, I, <clears throat> if I get enough faith, <coughs> I can put Mount Everest in the ocean. Why don't you start with an anthill first? You move an anthill out of my backyard out into the ocean, and then we can start from there. 
See, it's, it's, it's using it as a symbol. Insurmountable. Now, I haven't seen Mount Everest. I mean, it's 25,000-something uh, feet above sea level. I don't have the exact exactly what it is in my mind. But it's, it's up there. <clears throat> Way up there. Not quite five miles above sea level. Okay? I mean, jets fly up there and fly over top. <laughs> at cruising altitude. Um, but I have seen, um, the highest mountains I've seen were the, um, in North America, North America were, were Mount San, Mount, um, oh, man, Mount San Jacinto, um, there outside of Palm Springs, it's 10,800 feet or something like that. And we see mountains <clears throat> throughout the, uh, German, Swiss and French Alps. We've driven through those, uh, Mont Blanc, um, and that kind of thing, and you know, we we and going up through Saint Gothard's Pass out of Italy into Switzerland. So we we've seen talking. We haven't seen anything like Mount Everest. I mean, that 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 bad boy is on up there, okay. But the mountains, and, and I but I do remember particularly in Palm Springs because of the way the way the mountains are there. You're out on the desert floor and you run into a mountain. I mean, you're sitting down here in Palm Springs. I don't know what that is above sea level, but it ain't much. And all of a sudden, there's a ten thousand eight hundred foot mountain standing right there in front of you you just don't run over top of it uh, we did take the aerial tram up my wife will never do that again um, <laughs> the only reason she took it back down is because she had no other way to get back down <laughs> hallelujah glory to god and it didn't help to have a, a, a worker on top of the other gondola coming down checking you know checking the cable riding outside on top uh, that, that really did you know <laughs> that was pretty uh, interesting uh, with her, <clears throat> but you just don't get, you just don't run up to the mountain and run over top of it. It's an insurmountable object. And this is what the, what Jesus is talking about. When you face circumstances that seem insurmountable, impossible to overcome situations of life that you cannot, um, they're just too big. See, if you'll say in it, be thou removed to be cast into the sea. So number one, what's he say? The first thing you got to do is say it. Glory to God. Amen. Then he adds it right after that and shall not doubt in his heart. So now listen, just saying it without believing it doesn't work. Saying it without believing it doesn't work. You've got to believe what you're saying. Amen. So he says, whosoever, there's Elliot and Dick and Jess and Cap and uh, Janie and Nathan and Elena, they're whosoever's. Hallelujah. And whoever else is watching out there, I don't see your name. Shall say to the, to the situation of life that seems too big to overcome. And not doubt it in your heart. In other words, but shall believe the things we say. Okay. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed to be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt, but shall believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass. He'll have whatsoever he saith. The one who speaks and believes that what he says will happen will have what he says. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, I say unto you, what things ever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. <clears throat> now, interesting, because, you know, um, oftentimes when we think of prayer, uh, our, our demeanor changes, our, 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 um, our posture, everything changes. But the word pray here is the exact same word used over in James chapter 4. Where it says, you have not because you ask not. Hallelujah. Okay. Or you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your own, word, own lust. Uh, that word, ateo, A-I-T-E-O, is translated ask in James 4, but pray in Mark eleven twenty four. 24. So we'll be literally well within uh, proper interpretation to say, Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever you, uh, whenever you ask, believe that you receive and you shall have. 
Okay? And I just want to do that, maybe take off the little, the religious mindset about praying and, and, and get to reality of we speak to things as believers. We look at the mountains and of life and the circumstances of life that are insurmountable and we speak to them in Jesus' name and believe that we receive it and we have it. Glory to God. So, in Mark 11, 23, three times the, the word say is used in, in different forms. Say, saith, uh, shall say, okay? Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed uh, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that things which he saith shall come to pass. He'll have whatsoever he saith. Amen? And the believing is used actually one time. And uh, Brother Hay used to say, the Lord told him that you're going to have to do three times as much saying as you do believing to get it to work. Hallelujah. So we have to speak. Now, I, I, I grew up in a church in a denomination um, that we would have uh, prayer request time in church. And we get together, you know, they say, it's, it's time for we're, the church is going to come together and we're going to pray. And we're going to agree for the, uh, the Lord to meet the needs of those here today. And we say, who has a prayer request? You know, and three, four, five people stand and say, well, brother, pastor, um, you know, uh, I've been dealing with such and such, such a pray for me that, you know, the Lord touched my body and healed me. And, you know, when you have those kind of prayer requests scattered around. And then when, no, when then we all got done, we always said this. And do we have any unspoken request? And everybody in the church just did a little hand wave. I got one. Give you an example. When we get done tonight, uh, go put the spread. Go get in your car, drive over to the closest McDonald's, and pull up to the um, little you know microphone thing there. Order order mic. And uh, they say, "May I ha hey, welcome to McDonald's. May I help you?" And say, "Yes, I have an unspoken order." And they drive up to the window. And they're going to look at you like you, you know, you are, you just fell out of a tree. You fell out of a stupid tree, hit every branch on the way down, and then the tree fell on top of you. And you're going to say, where's my order? Well, you had, I, you didn't tell us what you wanted. Yeah, I had an unspoken order. See, we, we can't approach God that way. You can't go, hey, I want everybody to agree with me about my prayer request. Okay, what is it? It's unspoken. How can I agree with you? I don't, I don't know what it is. Are you out there? Is anybody in the room with me? How, how can I agree with you if I don't know what I'm, I'm agreeing to or with? Hello? It doesn't work that way. No. You, you, to, in order to agree, you've got to know what you're talking about. You don't have unspoken requests. We don't go to the Lord with unspoken prayer, silent prayer. People talk about I have silent prayer. That, there's no such thing. You're thinking, but you ain't praying. Hello? And I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm not trying to be uh, mean. But the fact of the matter is we, we've picked up things in the church that are thoroughly unscriptural in practice, but we think we're, we're doing something uh, that's going to get us answers. Now, the Bible says this. He knows what we have need of before we ask or think. Hello. <clears throat> now, we might be thinking it, but if we ain't asking for it, then we haven't released any faith. So there's no such thing as silent prayer. The word prayer comes from the Greek ateo. It means to ask. Verbal. You're verbalizing. You're communicating. You say, well, what about people who are, who are dumb? You know, well, they verbalize through sign language. They communicate that way. Okay? That's not, si that's not being silent. A person who's signing and uses sign, and I can't do any. You know, I mean, I, mean, I remember Jesus, you know, hallelujah, and uh, glory and um, 
Lord, I can't, can't remember, Lord, you know, across the vestry with the L. Um, I remember a couple, a few little things here and there. Uh, but they are verbalizing with, with, lang with their, their language of their hands. But they're not being silent. They're not being silent in that sense. So, because people always come to try and, they always look for the exception when you say something like that. And, um, and I just get, I get tired of people trying to find ways out of doing the Bible. Okay? You know, excuse me why they don't do the Bible. So, no such thing as silent prayer. No such thing as a silent confession. You might be thinking stuff. You might be meditating stuff in your mind. Even, even meditate don't mean to be silent. It means to mutter. It means to speak it to yourself. <clears throat> You'll find out in Scripture there is a lot about speaking things. Man was created a speaking spirit, literally in the Scriptures. Man became a living soul, actually literally a speaking spirit. God said let there be light. That, it didn't say God thought let there be light. God said. Let there be light. God said the law of Genesis is to speak and have it come to pass. Hello. If you want it, you're going to have to say it. Can I get a couple of hand claps? Uh, even a help me Jesus out there if you're having a hard time right now. All right. Praise the Lord. So, so Jesus stops and says, have the faith of God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, unto this circumstance, be removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. Now let me ask you, how are you going to get to the place where you don't doubt in your heart? You'll get so full of what the word of God says about that circumstance that it overwhelms unbelief. The Bible says Abraham being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able also to perform. See, there's a key. Fully persuaded. The ruler said to Paul, I believe Agrippa, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Almost persuaded is not enough. Abraham was fully persuaded. Amen. And then you speak what you believe. You must believe your words. That's the third point. You must believe your words. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 13. We believe. I mean, uh, we having the same spirit of faith as according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. If you have the spirit of faith, you are speaking what you believe. The Bible spirit of faith is we believe, therefore we speak. Therefore have I spoken, we also believe, and therefore speak. Look at Numbers chapter 13. This is, this is a good object lesson here. Always a good object lesson. You can't, you can teach the subject without using this passage, but I'll tell you, it's hard to. Now we know what's going on in Numbers, or we should. Um, Moses has sent the, the uh, 12 spies in to spy out the land, Joshua and Caleb being two of them. And they went in for 40 days to spy out the land. And they came back, okay, and they were to bring up a report of the land. And um, remember they brought the cluster of grapes that was so big, one cluster was so big they had put on a staff between two men to carry it. And... Um, Verse 26 of, of Numbers chapter 
uh, 13 says, And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. Woo! Just like, just like God told them. It's a land that floweth with milk and honey. And told them and said, We came into the land whither thou sent us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. And that's exactly where they should have shut up. Because the next word out of their mouth was never the less. Never the yeah, that's that's a big long way of saying but. Okay? We don't need any buts in the church. I hope you got that. We might want butts in the seats, but we don't need butts in the church. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, the pe listen, God didn't ask him to find, tell what the people were like. <clears throat> Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the ch children of Anak there. And the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. And the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And the termites, termites are eating up the house. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Got all the ites. Now here they are. They've come back and they go, oh, we got, we, got the, we got the fruit just like Moses, like God told Moses. We got all this fruit of the land. It's a land that flows with milk and honey. But let me tell you something, baby. I mean, it may be a land that flows with milk and honey, but I am telling you there are some big dudes over there. Giants are there. There's walled cities there. There's armies over on the other side. I mean, man, we are in trouble. And Caleb stilled the people. Before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Now, here we are. There's a voice of faith out there. And I'm telling you, the Spirit of God is always speaking, and there's always faith in the voice. And when he's talking to you, it's always talking faith. But the men that went up with him, not Joshua, the other ten, said, we be not able to go against the people, for they are stronger than we. Well, who said we need to go? Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. God's great. God's already brought them out of Egypt. <clears throat> Hello? He's already drowned Pharaoh. Now he's getting ready to bring him across Jordan and go into the promised land. How how soon people forget how great and powerful and mighty God is. Amen. But the men went up with him and said, We be not able to go against the people, <clears throat> for they are stronger than we. And this is what the Bible says. Now, today we would say, uh, if you went and saw that, you say, they brought an accurate report. Okay? They brought the truth. Bring the truth, brother. They brought, them people is big over there. I mean, you got Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair over there waiting to t eat, rip us apart, man. Woo! Woo! That's your boy, baby. But the Bible says they brought up an evil. I'm sorry. <laughs> that came out <laughs> like uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. They brought up an evil report out of the land. Hallelujah. They brought up <clears throat> when they said, we're not able. It was an evil report. Which they searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have gone in search of it is a land. Listen, God said it was a land that floweth with milk and honey. They said this, it's a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people we saw in it were great, or men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come, which come of the giants. Listen to this phrase. And we were in our 
own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Now when you read and study further, when the children of Israel finally get over on the other side, they ask them what took them so long. They've been living there that 40 years, scared to pieces because they had heard all the things that a great God had done. But you empower the enemy with an evil report. When you speak an evil report, you empower the enemy over your life to cause you to walk in the wilderness and walk in defeat. And we were in our sight as grasshoppers and so we were in their sight. It wasn't, and we were like grasshoppers in their sight, and so we 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 were like grasshoppers. Uh-uh. Because we were grasshoppers in our own sight, we became grasshoppers in theirs. So they weren't afraid of the people of Israel. They were afraid of the God of Israel. But the people of Israel obviously didn't understand their own God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and the Bible says, and the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. And look, they were going to—they were going to stone Moses. I mean, they were—you know—I tell you, this bunch is flaky. They're a special kind of flaky. Hallelujah. Their words kept that entire generation from going into the land. Because they accepted the evil report. When you take the evil report, it will keep you out of the land of blessing. It will keep you out of the promises of God. It will keep you out of that which the Lord has for you. My, my, my. But look at 1 John 4, 4. Ye are of God, little children. And have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you. Than he that is in the world. Why can we speak words of faith and victory and overcoming? Because 1 John 5, 4 says. And whatsoever is born of God overcometh. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. Glory to God. We're born to be winners. We are born to believe. We're born to speak God's word. Hallelujah. We're, going, we're born to declare and have the faith of God and get the answers from heaven, praise the Lord. Can you say hallelujah? Can I even get an old Pentecostal shanda or charismatic shanda out there? Now, I don't know how to spell it, but if you can figure it out, I think people used to say, spell S-H-A-N-D-A-I, shanda. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. We are of God and have overcome because greater he that's in us than he that's in the world. And what service born of God overcometh. Amen. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Now, if we take that scripture, 1 John 5, 4, this is a victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. And go back to Mark eleven twenty two. 24, 25, and 26. Have the faith of God. This is the victory that overcometh the world. How does that faith work? It works by speaking. Had those 12 spies all come back in harmony. Are you listening to me now? Let me say this. I can tell you without, without even flinching. Had those 12 spies came back in harmony. <coughs> and said, the land is just like Moses said. It's a land that floweth with milk and honey. Hallelujah. And uh, yeah, there's, there's um, Enoch there. There's giants there. But let me tell you, we are, let us go up at once. We are well able to take it. They're, they are, um, they're, they're food for us. Let us go up at once and take it. We would have never had the story of manna and quail. Hello? Because they wouldn't have been in the wilderness for 40 years. 
they'd have gone over and taken the land. Hello? Now let me tell you how strong the faith is. There was a mountain there that Caleb saw when he went and spat it out. And he wanted that mountain. And after they went in, and after 40 years they went in, <clears throat> now remember Caleb was um, about 40 years old. Him and Joshua are about 40 years old when they went to spy the land out. They're the only two who lived beyond the age of 20, those that were 20, uh, 20 and older. Everyone that's 20 and older died in the wilderness. And uh, they're the only two who didn't because they, they, they did not bring back an evil report. Moses didn't get to go in uh, because he struck the rock twice in the wilderness. And, he, and God couldn't allow the um, symbolic thing of the rock being struck and bringing forth living water to be struck twice. It only had to be once. Jesus only had to die once. And so he couldn't allow that to stand. So God's, but, Mo, but then Moses got to go in later. See, God, God got to bring him in during the Mount of Transfiguration. Hallelujah. <laughs> Isn't God good? Hallelujah. I said, Isn't God good? Amen. Praise God. But, um, hallelujah. They get in there. It takes them five years. They go, it takes them five years to go clear the land out. And after five years, Caleb comes back to Joshua. And Caleb's 85. See, faith doesn't know age. Hallelujah. Faith just gets stronger. And he says, now look, I saw that back when I was with Moses. And I told him I wanted that place. I was told I could have it. Now, I'm 85 years old, but uh, my strength hadn't waned. My eyes not them. Give me my mountain. <clears throat> now, his mountain hadn't to be possessed by giants. And the 85-year-old dude, full of faith, went and ran all the giants off his mountain. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He took his mountain at 85. Because faith is not natural strength. Faith is not youthful vigor. Hello? A man or woman of faith doesn't have to be Arnold Schwarzenegger in the flesh. Hello? And I'm not against being in good condition, that kind of stuff. But what I'm saying is you can be in great condition and be a weenie in faith. Hello? He took, and took that mountain because of faith. They were wet. We are well able to take that. Amen. We are let us go up at once for we are well able. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he still believed it 45 years later. As a matter of fact, he had 45 years to muse on it. And to get stronger in faith. Hallelujah. Philippians 4, 8 says this. Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Do not think on defeat. Think on victory. Hallelujah. Think on the answer. The answer that comes from God's word. Amen. Praise God. Paul wrote to Timothy, I mean to the church of Thessalonica, in 2 Thessalonica 1 3, and he says, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet or necessary, because your faith groweth exceedingly. When our faith grows, the spirit of faith is working in us. We believe, therefore we speak. Hallelujah. The words of faith that you speak will produce victories in your life and set you on course to great things in God, in Christ Jesus, through faith in him.
Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, I trust you got some, something out of that. Can I get some hand claps out there or waves or I, or I, I got something out of it, Pastor? Glory to God. Okay, I see thumbs ups. Amen. Hey, oh. All right, who got happy over there? Praise the Lord. All right. Well, it's time to receive our midweek offering. If you're watching tonight and you uh, want to give, uh, we have uh, uh, two means of electronic giving. That is right through uh, PayPal and the, the Cash App. Hallelujah. Uh, and the Cash App is that green little square dollar thing on, on the App Store and then, of course, PayPal. Um, and you can give through those means. The information on how to do that is up on your screen. And uh, the, uh, the, the uh, what do they call hashtags or whatever they are that they use, you know, for PayPal, um, and you know, in the cash, in the cash, square cash, um, which is like dollar sign, Faith Victory Church, PayPal is uh, the, the uh, email address of donations at fvc.org. Um, giving to the church, we we'll give your tithe, we we'll give to our building fund to help us in acquiring our own uh, permanent location. Praise God. Uh, we currently stand at twenty thousand, close like twenty thousand nine hundred dollars, right at that 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 amount, right around there. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And um, our goal is sixty five thousand to have in the bank to um, be able to buy. And uh, glory to God, that gets us up into the uh, three hundred thousand plus range for, for purchase. And uh, we're believing God for that. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, if you want to get so into that, then just you know obey whatever God says. Hallelujah. All right, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that people tithe and give. Thank you they're blessed according to the word of God. And thank you heaven's windows are open unto them and you empty out of them blessings. <clears throat> they don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. We're so glad you could join us tonight. Thank you for being with us. Be safe. You know, those in, in, in the um, <clears throat> projected ice storm um, sweet spot, I don't know if it's a sweet spot, sour spot, but um, they've even got some models showing uh, our area and a, and a big swath all the way up in the rich Virginia of three quarters of an inch of ice, which is a, which is a hunk. <clears throat> so um, be safe. Don't be traveling. Um, you know, um, ice storms, you don't want to be out driving under trees <laughs> for obvious reasons. You don't want to be sitting there if it falls over. Um, and uh, just... You know, just just you be, be wise, be smart. Um, run out to the grocery store, grab you some water. Uh, probably there's not any milk left. Um, <laughs> we went by the grocery store yesterday. We we're going to get something. We we're going to get milk. We already had some. But uh, you we drove to the parking lot and thought, it ain't worth it. I am not even going in. It, it was crazy. <clears throat> Hallelujah. But um, praise the Lord. We trust you'll be safe, warm, have food, and, and, and no harm or no injury come to you in the name of Jesus. We love you. God bless you. And remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. And whatsoever is born of God overcometh. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We'll see you next time at, here at Faith and Victory Church. We love you. God bless you. Good night.